Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are and what time of day it is when you watch this video. My name is Z, and welcome back to my gaming corner. In today's adventure, we have come to the Isle of Thunder on the Mists of Pandaria expansion, Continent of Pandaria. And this is for our Tier 15 sets from the Throne of Lei Shen, who is a resurrected Mogu King. He was the King of Thunder, he brought the Mogu great power, and we are going to go and vanquish him today, but we'll find out that he actually was a servant of someone else, who, after we defeat him, will actually change his ways, and we won't see him again until the latter part of Battle for Azeroth, during the Visions of Nazoth expansion little set. So, here we are on... The Isle of Thunder. We are right here at Stormsing Landing, right here in front of the gates of the Throne of Thunder. This is part of this island chain right here, but you can only access it from Taolong Steps here at the Shadow Pan Garrison. Now, if you don't have Thunder Isle unlocked, you can come to right here for the Horde or right here for the Alliance, and you can start a quest, which is a solo scenario, to actually go and open up the Isle of Thunder, and then you can come back to Shadow Pan Garrison to your respective area, whether Horde or Alliance, and there'll be a portal there to the Isle of Thunder. You cannot fly there. If you try, you'll hit the Water Sea and then the South Seas, and you'll hit an invisible barrier. You cannot fly from Shan Zedo up to the Isle of Thunder. You just can't do it. So you have to take the portal at Shadow Pan Garrison right there. And for the tier 15 sets, some of them are really, really nice, and some of them are really, really terrible. So let's look at the tier 15 sets. So up here on my mini-map, I have a lovely little button called Atlas Loot. And we're going to take this pull-down menu down to Collections, and this pull-down menu down here to Tier Sets. And we are working on the tier 15 sets for Mists of Pandaria, and there are three colors, Raid Finder, Normal, and Heroic. For the Hunter, Tier 15 set, I believe it's called Sarek Stalker, Battle Gear of the Sarek Stalker, yeah. On Raid Finder, it looks like that. On Normal Difficulty, the Tier 15 set looks like that. And on Heroic, the Hunter Gear, the Sarek Stalker Battle Gear looks like that. We'll do once around for the Hunters. Hunters look like that for Tier 15. For Mages, the Tier 15 set looks like that. I believe it's Regalia of the Chromatic Hydra. Yeah, Regalia of the Chromatic Hydra. On Raid Finder, it looks like this. On Normal, the Mage Gear is that color. And on Heroic, the Mage Gear is that, which is my personal favorite because it's like for an Arcane Mage, but it has a little bit of red, fireish energy coming off of it. Looks really, really cool. The Raid Finder set also looks kind of cool because, I mean, it is frosty like a, like a Frost Mage, but there is a lot of red and a lot of gold in it. So yeah, the mage set, the value of the Chromatic Hydra. The rogue set for tier 15 is called the Nine Tail Battle Gear. On Raid Finder, it looks like this. On normal mode, the rogue set looks like this. And on heroic, the rogues look like this. Bright white Nine Tail Battle Gear. That is the rogue set. For our warlock friends out there, their set is called Regalia of the Thousandfold Hells. Okay, so if you want to look like a, a hell spawn from the great deep fiery dark beyond, Regalia of the Thousandfold Hells. On Raid Finder, it looks like that. On normal difficulty, the warlocks look bright red and fiery orange, and on heroic, they are even brighter red and even yuckier, brighter orange. Once around for the Warlocks, Regalia of the Thousandfold Hells, there they are. Death Knight gear looks like this, and it is called the Plate of the All-Consuming Maw. Plate of the All-Consuming Maw. On Raid Finder, they are green. On Normal, the Death Knights are red, and the shoulder opens up and you saw that tongue come out. And then on Heroic, the Death Knights are this wonderful, bluish, frosty, wintry, blue and white. So... Battle Gear of the All-Consuming Maw is the Death Knights. For the Druids, 
the tier 15 set is the regalia of the haunted forest it's haunted forest regalia on raid finder it is green and if we do zoom in on the on the shoulders you can see there's like little butterflies and like a little weird mouth here and on this shoulder there's a yucky spider let me move this down and zoom in look at this there's a yucky spider hanging out in the shoulder <laughs> yuck right absolutely yuck so on raid finder they are green on normal difficulty they are red with blue accents and then on Heroic, the Haunted Forest Battle Gear looks like this, but that spider in the shoulder, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But that is the Druid set, Regalia of the Haunted Forest. For the Priest set, their gear looks like this, and it's called Vestments of the Exorcist. It's kind of ugly, especially this weird helmet with the bell hanging between the two horns. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's candles that are burnt out, but they have little smoke motifs coming off the top of them. Raid Finder, they are red. On normal, the priests turn darker red, like crimson blood red. And on heroic, the priests are gold and green. Once around for the priests, Regalia of the Exorcist. That is the priest gear for tier 15. The monk gear for tier 15 looks like this, and it is called Fire Charm Armor. Okay, so on Raid Finder, they are this beautiful gold and whitish jade color with jade smoke all over. On normal mode, they turn bronze and green with blue. And on heroic, they are white with gold and red. So fire charm armor for the monks. Paladin armor is interesting and it is the vestments of the lightning emperor. Yeah. So on Raid Finder difficulty, they are white with green. On normal difficulty, Lightning Ember armor is yellow. Yellow with lightning. And on heroic, the Paladin armor is jade with gold and blue. Once around, Lightning Emperor armor for the Paladins. For the Shaman. Shaman tier 15 said, I believe, is the Regalia of the Witch Doctor. I was right. There we go. Regalia of the Witch Doctor. And boy, is it Witch Doctor -y. On Raid Finder, the shamans look like that. On Normal, the shamans look like this. And on Heroic, the shaman look like that. Once around for the shaman, Regalia of the Witch Doctor. Kind of creepy, if you ask me. Finally, but most certainly not least, we have the Warriors. On Raid Finder, they look like that, and their gear is called Battle Plate of the Last Mogu, so they actually get to look like a Mogu warrior. There they are in Raid Finder difficulty, white with gold accents. On Normal Mode, they are silver with green and yellow accents. And on... Yes, you are, Nalik. And then on Heroic, they are like a proper Mogu, stone brown, jade green, and just anger all over the place. So... Battle plate of the last Mogu is for the warrior set. Those are the tier 15 sets, and we are located here at the meeting stone for Throne of Thunder. The raid portal is right there. So let's go inside, and let me show you how to complete this raid. Now, this raid is one of the bigger ones. It has many, many bosses. I think the boss count is like 14, I think. And there's lots of roleplay here. So if we look at Atlas Loot... We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so there's 13 bosses. I was close. I was off by one. But it is a very long raid. And there's lots of roleplay. There's lots of dialogue. Lots of fun. And it's also one of the better places where when you loot the guys. Look at that. We just got five gold from three, 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 three trash mobs. So it's a really good place if like you're going for a raw gold farm. The loot here still sells pretty well. Um, we just got another 15 gold from just a few mobs at 77 silver. So basically 16 gold. And then you want to come up here and kill the Zandalari Stormcaller. Right there. And he's going to give us a gold. So... When you come into Throne of Thunder, you appear right here at the entrance portal. You want to come straight down here. Your first boss is Jinrock the Breaker. Then you want to turn south and go across this horrible storm area. But let's take care of Jinrock the Breaker first of all.
there he is, Jinrock the Breaker. Okay, Jinrock the Breaker has been defeated. We get 53 gold for our quarry. We get the Cloud Breaker Great Belt. It is a plate belt. I do believe that is for the Warriors. So if we once again look at the Warrior set right here, or maybe it's not for the Warrior. Well, I know it's not for the Death Knights, and I know it's not for the Paladins, or no. Well, I just got a plate belt that doesn't match anything. So, okay then. We also got Jinrock Soul Crystal, which is a ring. I can't show off rings on this in Transmog. We got the robes of the Static Burst. That is the priest robe lookalike. So if you want your mages or your warlocks to look like a priest, there's the robes. We also got the Ghostbinder Great Boots. Male boots. Those are for... Are those for the hunters? Uh, no, it's not. It's for the shaman. It's the shaman boots. We just got the shaman boots and another ring with the cloth legs, all sets, tormented leggings. Those are definitely for the warlocks. There we go. That is just from Jinrock the Breaker. Now we are going to head south and we have our exclamation point right here. So each week when you come to Throne of Thunder, somewhere in the raid, there'll be a floating giant exclamation point and a rare that will give you a lot of gold and lots of supplies. Now, when you get to this point right here, you do not want to touch those blue circles because you will get thrown up into the air and pushed off the edge and you will die. So as we cross this exclamation point right here, we're gonna get a quest. And there it is, Requiem for a Queen. And the quest says, a chilling breeze sweeps across your body, bringing with it a haunting drape of sadness. Your soul sinks as you hear the faint, melodic cries of Minara, the last queen of the Mogu. Her sweet requiem creeps through the air, bending and shaping itself into a spectral hand, reaching for your heart. As it grabs a hold, you can see a brief flash of Minara's last moments, her brutal murder by the hand of Lei Shen. Song turns to sadness, and Minara weeps, wailing louder and louder into the darkness. So we need to kill Minara put her to rest and she looks like this right over here on the right hand side she's a floating yellowy banshee and we will find her right over there now there is going to be um, a crosswind the entire way so your best bet is to go into auto run and just hold down the letter A to run it at, at an angle and then just run straight forward but if you need to get brushed aside so you don't get touched by those blue blue circles do that and then run directly against the wind but slightly forward and once you get to the spaces between the the tiles oh dear you can run all the way over but we want to stay away from that blue circle because you'll get pushed off and you'll fall into the death and bad things will happen when you fall into death because you'll die okay we've made it to the stairs we're good let's kill queen minara She wants to give us some funeral ashes and then Requiem for a Queen completion. Anara's final cries echo through the hollow walls of the courtyard. And we get Spoils of the Thunder King. Okay, those Spoils of the Thunder King give us 29 gold plus the brittle Flame Reaver pauldrons of the Quick Blade. Male shoulders that look like that. So there is a green set in here by not equipped in mail that makes you look like one of the Zandalari trolls. Very cool, if you ask me. Now, don't touch the blue circles. And this, this second part of this storm area, you are running directly into the wind. So just put on auto run and then you can go left or right as the situation requires so you don't touch those blue circles. If you get attacked by this banshee, just take it out. It's fine. It's these spirit flayers that are the problem. And he's going to go in a zigzag pattern back and forth across the area. You do not want to touch his blue circle because you will get blown off and you will die. As soon as you kill this Stormbringer Drazil mob up here, the storm will stop and then you can mount up and come through here. The spirit flayers disappear, the wailing banshees disappear, they're called tormented spirits. And then if you have a party back there that doesn't quite know how to do this part, 
you can come up here yourself, kill this guy yourself, and then they can just run down here normally without having to worry about a crosswind. Okay, so once you make it to this point, you want to come through this atrium right here into the Colosseum of Sorts. We have to fight off against Horadon and the entire Zandalari Empire. of the Zondolari Empire. The tribes have assembled. They face not one force, but the combined might of all the Troll Empire. The Hand of Zul will span all the continents of Azeroth once again. And the lesser races will know pain. Now witness the true might of the Beast War. The color to Chuka Horridor. All right, there is Horadon, our second boss. He has a chance of dropping a pet and a mount. So the pet that he can drop as Horadon, he can drop the spawn of Horadon, which is the mount, but then he can also drop the Horadon spawnling, which is the pet. So you can get a little Dire Horn runt that looks like Horadon, or you can get actual Horadon as a mount. Okay, loot from Hordon. 52 gold. Hordon's Tusk Fragment. Necklace. We can't show all that off. And the wrist. The Vaccinator's Arm Wraps. Those bracers look like that. So they are the cloth bracers. They are for the priests. There they are. We've got the priest bracers. Two of those. We also got Jalak's Maelstrom Staff. A two-handed staff. It's for the druids. It goes really well with the tier 6 set. Like, really well with tier 6 druid. So let me pull in tier 6 druid for you. So if we go to collections and bring this one down to tier sets and we come here to tier 6 sets and we go for the druids, where are they? Right here at the top. See? The druid set red with bones and stuff and that staff is like red with blue and there's blue up here. It's a perfect staff for the tier 6 druid set. So there it is. We got that staff today. Very cool. We also get the Frozen Warlord Bracers. Plate Bracers. Those are for the Warriors. For the Mogu set. And Jirthud, Graceful Hand of the Savior. A one-handed mace. Looks like that with little claws and teeth or whatever on the underside of the mace. That is the loot from Horadon. So once you have killed Horadon, you want to turn and head to the north and head through this hallway here and make your way out to the Council of Elders. Now, in this hallway, you are going to encounter um, Gazrul, the Spirit Binder. We killed him in Mogushin Vaults. And all these mobs, once you reach this big hallway right here, you're going to have to kill twice because he's going to come back as a spirit and raise their souls into undead. Or there's Garajal. Okay, so Garajal, the Spirit Binder. It's the guy we killed in Mogushin Vaults. And now he appears here in Throne of Thunder. He says he has to go find a new home for me, soul, and I'll be back. Ha 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 ha. Well, he's back on Thunder Isle. Now, these living sand elementals that we're fighting here, like when we attack this mob right here, we're going to get a whole bunch of sand elementals coming to attack us. These sand elementals have like a 4% chance of dropping the living sandling pet. It is a battle pet. It's, it's a fairly good one. I don't use it personally. Um, crumbling stone shard, some BOE stuff. So yeah, no battle pet, but you can get it from any of the living sand elementals in this hallway before the Council of Elders. Can we attack these guys, please? Thank you. So 
no sandling pet yet. Oh, they have loot for me. Still no sandling pet. Stone hearts so. And we get the blood spattered Zandalari journal. Interesting. Interesting. And now we get to kill all these guys again. Okay, once that's done, you'll be taken into a little corner room. So we look at our map, see we're coming into this little corner room right here. And there are more living sandlings when we attack these inner mobs. These guys here at the edge, they don't summon sandlings. These guys in the middle summon sandlings. How cool would it be if we were able to get ourselves a living sandling pet today? Okay, loot from these guys. We got some gold, some pearl milk tea, some wind wool cloth, mode of harmony, some peanut chicken, and waterfall robe of the Aurora. Cloth robes, BOE robes. No living sandling pet today. Too bad. The music in this first part with the trolls is just so cool. Lee Shen, let us prove to you the might of the Zandalari. We will crush these intruders where they stand. We will never fail you. And that's Garajal the Spirit Binder trying to make his plea to Lee Shen. Oh dear, right? <laughs> Okay, this boss fight, Garajal is going to be turning one of these four bosses, whether it's Zul the Sandcrawler, or Khazra Jinn, or High Priestess Maril, or Frost King Malak. He'll be turning one of them into a Shadow Priest, so like they'll be look like a shadow. And you want to kill the one that looks like a Shadow Priest, but you want to kill Sol the Sandcrawler first, otherwise you're going to get slowed and, and tied down with sand, you won't be able to run very fast. Alright, loot from the Council of Elders. 54 gold, we get the Lower Ridden Bracers. Male wrists. Those are for the Hunters, for Sark Stalker. There they are. We get the Bad Juju Trinket. Plus 15 mastery. Equip. When your attacks hit, you have a chance to gain 50 agility and summon 3 Voodoo Gnomes for 10 seconds. Approximately 1.10 procs per minute. Really good trinket for you agility users out there, whether you're rogues or demon hunters or hunters out there that use agility, there you go. We got two of those, very cool. We got the Zandalari robes of the final rite. Those are the warlock, warlock robes. If you want your mages and your priests to look like a warlock. We also got this talisman of angry spirits, that's a necklace. Can't show off necklace in the raid, in the dressing room, but we can show off these abandoned spalders of renewal. Those are the shaman shoulders right here from Council of Elders. Okay, so once that fight is complete, you want to turn to the east, make your way into this atrium, open this door, and you get to watch the first cinematic of the Throne of Thunder raid. Your trespass ends here. 
None may enter my forbidden stronghold. I shall be built a trick to your boat for bricks. Oh dear, so we try to cross the bridge and Lei Shen blows us into oblivion down into the depths of the Undercroft. Oh joy, right? Alright, so here we are in the layer of Tordos below the bridge we were trying to cross. He is our next boss. He's also tameable because he's a level question question beast boss. If you come here as a hunter, you can actually tame Tordos now. Very cool, right? Okay, let's kill Tordos for our next set of loot. Look at the way he dies. He lifts up, he breaks apart, and he falls into pieces. And when you tame Tauros or Chrysalis from Suramar, he dies the same way. Okay, 57 gold. Spalders of the Quaking Fear. We just got these shoulder lookalikes from the last boss. So there they are again. We also get the Quick Stompers, male feet. Again, for the Hunters. I do believe those are now the Hunter Boots. So if we look at the tier 15, right there for Hunters. Uh, yeah. Those are the Sarek Stalker. Let's go to Heroic. And now look, the colors all match. Okay, so we get the Hunter Boots. Excellent. We get the Crystal Claw Gloves. Cloth Gloves. Those are for the Mages. We've got the Mage Gloves. Shell Coated Wrist Plates. Plate Wrists look like this right here. Let me move these. Oh, I can't move the, I can move the preview out of the way. Those are, I do believe, the, the Death Knight set bracers. So there they are. Death Knight Bracers and Zhang's Ancient Keg Master, one-handed mace. Looks like that. We also get another of the Crystal Gloves for the Mages. So that is the loot from Tordos. Now, come back behind his right leg to the left. You can actually mount up in here. And we get to go visit now the Forgotten Depths of the Throne of Thunder. This is below the catacombs, this is below the bridge, this is below the structure, this is below everything. This is the Forgotten Depths. Now, in this gargantuan room, there are three eternal guardians. That's those creatures right there. And they guard eternal bells. So when you kill the eternal guardian, you're going to loot some funeral ashes. And then back here, we have the ancient Mogu Bell. You need to click on all three of the Mogu Bells to summon our next boss, Megara. So the first one is right back here. The second one is right over here in this area. And then the third one is over here and I will show you where they all are so if we're just gonna run forward over here I think it's over here am I completely mistaken wait no 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 no, no. so the first one the first one's back here because there's the ancient bell we rang and then the second one we need to go straight across here I believe he's over there. Yes, yes, yes. Wait, no. No, yes, there he is. The Eternal Guardian. Okay, so there he is. And here's our second bell. Okay, so the first one... The first one that came down is right here. Second one is over here. And then we need to run along this ridge. And the third one is right over there. So we're going to turn to the right... And we're going to come over here. And when we hit this lip of sorts, you're going to see the chasm we're running along. There it is. There's the chasm. You're going to run along this chasm. So we are now going across this chasm. And then you want to go into this back corner right there. Because that's where you'll find your next eternal guardian. Oh, I guess he's way down here in the watery area. Got our funeral ashes and... Uh-oh. Megara rises from the mist. Oh no. So, 
One is right there. Two is up here. Three is way down here. And then you turn to the right. Oops, let's skip all of that. And you will find a geyser has sprung up right there. And Megara the Hydra is waiting just beyond. You have to kill seven heads before Megara is considered defeated. And when you kill a head, it just replicates and goes to the background and starts pummeling you with more and more and more abilities. So we just killed the venomous heads. So now we're going to get two venomous heads. There's a venomous head right there. One. Venomous head over there. Now we're going to kill a uh, frost head. But every time you kill a head, he goes into this rampage. And the rampage, as it, it lasts for like 20 seconds. So this fight takes a while. <laughs> rampage ends in three, two, one, zero. We can now kill this final, this next head. Okay, so that the frozen head is now dead. We're going to come to the left, and we are going to kill this fire head. So, again, Rampage lasts about 20 seconds. We just have to wait for it to end. Okay, Rampage faded. Let's kill that fire head. There we go. And now, if we continue moving to the left right over here, we now have an arcane head that we can kill. The arcane head only appears on heroic mode or greater. So 10 heroic, 25 heroic, that's where the arcane head is. Okay, Rampage is faded, let's kill the arcane head. Okay, there we go, arcane head is defeated. We can come back over here and take out our second Venomous Head. Okay, Rampage is faded. Venomous Head goes bye bye We can now kill our second frost head so if you do this method go from venom to frost to fire to arcane you only have to kill every head twice but the arcane head you only have to kill once so this is our sixth head rampage ends in two one rampage is faded let's kill this second head there we go that's number six and this is number seven So you heard that woman in BBM say six? That means I've killed six heads. You have to kill seven heads to kill Megara. So when we kill this fire head right here, once Rampage has ended in nine seconds, then the fight will be over. Like I said, it just takes a while to get through Megara. Okay, Rampage is faded. And there we go, Megara has been defeated and we get our chest right here. Loot from Megara. 53 gold, we get Jirthud, Graceful Hand of the Savior. We get that mace again. So we just got that from the last boss. We can get it from this boss too. We got the Megara Shining Eye, a necklace. We get the Sandals of Arcane Fury. Those are for the mages, those are the mage boots. We get the Breath of the Hydra, Heroic Trinket, 15 to haste. Equip your periodic damage spells. Have a chance to grant 50 intellect for 10 seconds, approximately 1.1 procs per second, or per minute. Really good trinket for you casters out there. We get the Great Sword of Frozen Hells. Two-handed sword looks like that. Really cool with the prismatic socket. Socket bonus is plus one to strength. You can use that in your time walking dungeons if you want to give yourself an edge because you can give yourself plus one more strength and put a big nasty gem in there for lots and lots and lots of strength and just go to town on all the time walking ads. So there you go. We got the plated toothbreaker girdle. That is the Death Knight belt. It goes perfectly with the Death Knight heroic set. See, it looks like this. It just goes perfectly with that maw on the shoulder with the tongue sticking out. 
and you have that little face on your belt. It just goes perfectly with the set. So that is the loot from Magira. Once Magira has been defeated, you've cut off her feet, you want to come over here and through this hallway and down this door right here. So you want to come in a south southwest southerly direction and you want to find this tunnel over here. And this will take us to the roost of G Kun. G Kun is the other boss in this raid that has a chance of dropping both a pet and a mount. You can get the clutch of G Kun, which is the mount, but you can also get a cute little G Kunling, which is a battle pet, which is super cute. He's like a little baby G Kun. It's really cute. Big fat beak. It's really cute. So make your way up these pipes, up and to the left. When you come to this point right here, you can see G Kun way up there already. You are right here coming up to the Throne of Thunder, like it says Throne of Thunder here, but this is really the Roost of G Kun. You see right here, Roost of G Kun, right here, and here's all your, your maps. So when you get up here, you want to try to avoid touching those spider webs right there, because they'll summon big nasty spiders to come and attack you. You don't want to touch those. And you want to make your way up the left stairways always because this this path veers to the left. When you get up to this first area, you meet your first gastropod. Why do I do this? I strafe to the left and I have to turn around. I don't know. My camera is just weird. The gastropods are evil little things. If you let them touch you, they will kill you. So you got to kill them from range. They'll basically just come on top of you and just eat you alive. Gastropods are bad news if you don't know what you're doing. So make your way up this next set of stairs. And our gastropod is up there at the top. And the gastropods have a very small chance of dropping a toy called, I do believe it's like Leroy the Speedy or something like that. So again, you have to go up the left side, but again, you want to try and avoid touching those spider webs because they summon big nasty spiders. Here's our next gastropod. You just need to kill him with ranged. A uh, snail shell. I need the shiny snail shell for the toy. Oh, now we got maggots. Ginormous maggots coming to eat us. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay, our next gastropod is right there. We're gonna throw a judgment hammer at him. We're gonna hit him with that. And let's go see if we get the shiny snail shell for the pet. Or not the pet, but the toy. Nope, just regular snail shells. Ah, uh, too bad. Okay. Now that we've made it all up these areas, and you're in this place right here, you can jump across to the middle to take care of G. Coon. There he is, large as life. Jump to the middle and take out this big, beautiful bird. Okay, loot from G Kun today. We get 55 gold. We get the Cord of Cacophonous Cawings Cloth Waste. That is for the Warlocks out there, for the Thousandfold Hells gear. We get these Egg Shared Grips, or Egg Shard Grips. Plate Hands, those are for the Warriors, the Warrior Gloves right there. We get Giorgio's Caduceus of Pure Moods. It is a two-handed staff, really good for the druids out there with feathers all over it, but it is pronounced Caduceus, not Caduceus. Don't even think it's pronounced Caduceus, it's pronounced Caduceus. And Caduceus just means twisted staff, and you can see that staff is pretty twisted. And then we get the leggings of the Cracking Vanquisher. Those tokens, drop. they sell for 50 gold. If you want the transmog, click the token. If you want the money, sell the token for 50 gold. And we get the robe of Midnight Down. That is the mage robe right there. If you want to make your warlocks or your priests look like the mages with the chromatic hydra set. Absolutely beautiful set, if you ask me. Okay. After you finish with G Kun, you see how there's like a little thing right over here in the southwest? Come click on this feather, and then you want to fly up to the alcove in the southwest of the map. And again, you want to fly up the left side of the stairs. 
if you go up the right stairs you end in a dead end and there's no way to jump across so you have to go up the left stairs to reach the appropriate hallway see what I mean nothing over there on the right side but on the left side we have this doorway that leads us to the watchers sanctum and this enters our next wing of the throne of thunder so we need to kill these three roaming fogs and then four big fogs will appear behind these rock statues over here like these rock faced they're they're big giant boulders is what they are with big giant watcher faces or like observer faces on them kind of creepy right yucky yuck 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 So the whole room starts to shake and these boulders fall away and behind them you will find these hidden fogs. You gotta kill all four of them and you can face off against Dumu the Forgotten. Or Duermu, whatever his name is. Dead on arrival and we get some vial of spewing mist from him. He's dead on arrival, another vial of spewing mist, and we got two more fogs right over there. Do remember the Forgotten is going to come from up there, by the way. Okay, our final hidden fog. See, and there's Dumu the Forgotten. Durumu. I guess I pronounced it Durumu the Forgotten. There he is. He's kind of an ugly son of a gun. Okay, loot from Darum of the Forgotten, 53 gold, caustic spike bracers, those plate wrists again for the death knights, we got those again. Leggings of pulsing blood, cloth legs for the warlocks, there they are. Darumu's captive eyeball, which is a ring, can't show those off. Aberrant chest guard of torment, male chest guard. That is the hunter chest, we just got that, very cool. We get the Chillblain Spalders. Those are the mage look-alike shoulders. So if you want your Warlocks or Priest to look like the Chromatic Hydra, we just got the mage look-alike shoulders for the mages. There they are. And the Reinforced Mirror Sheen Cloak looks like this. Kind of like a, a Manted Wing Cloak. Kinda like an Insect Wing. Or an Insect Husk. That is Dur Durumu the Forgotten. And then right here in the south, you will find a hallway where there's these red slimes coming out of the hallway. You want to try to avoid the red slimes, otherwise you're going to be fighting them all the way to the top. But you come here to the south, you're going to come up a, set, a spiral staircase. And then you're going to come up here into another spiral, half spiral staircase, and in here to where we can fight our next boss, Primordius. So again, try to avoid the red, the red slimes as best you can. Oh, see, one aggro on me. I was too close. Whoops. A big one's gonna fall down. These big ones are elites. Let's just kill the big ones. You see, like, these red, these little red ones are gonna be following us the entire way. You kill one, they're all gonna start attacking you. It's best to just avoid them. Ah, no, not another one. So here we are at the second spiral staircase. It's only a half spiral. Because then we need to turn to the right and come up to this big circular room. And this is the Sarok creation pit. Okay, now somewhere in here... I believe he's right over there. Yeah, that there's Primordius right over there. You can see the skull I put on him. He's a bit of a tanky boss. So, 
So he's not going to go down very quickly because he's he's very much a tank. He's a big giant Sarok. He's kind of ugly. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so loot from Primordius, 53 gold. Is something still attacking me? Oh yeah, these red slimes. whoop de doo We got the Helix Breaker Gloves, cloth. Oh, we can't show off stuff when we're under attack. Go away, get out of my way. There we go. Okay. Oh, we got the Dothrak the Sword Breaker, one-handed sword. There you go. I don't think we've collected that appearance. We haven't. Very cool. We got a sword we didn't have before. Very cool. Helix Breaker Gloves. Cloth Gloves. Those are for the priests. Those are the priest gloves. We get this Pathogenic Gauntlets. Those are the gloves for the Death Knight lookalike set if you want your paladins and your warriors to look like Death Knights. We got Primordius' Talisman of Rage. 15 Critical Strike Trinket. Equip. Your attacks have a chance to grant you 10 strength for 10 seconds. This effect can stack up to 5 times approximately 3.5 procs per minute. That is an excellent trinket for time walking. I might just save that for time walking too. We got two of those. And we also got the bracers of fragile bone cloth bracers. Those are for the warlocks. So there we go. So, yep, there we go. Okay, that is the loot from Primordius. We haven't found any pets yet, which is kind of weird. Ever since the, the latest hotfix last week, I haven't seen any pets. So once you kill Primordius, there's a doorway that opens right here to your right. You want to go through this door, up this back set of stairs to the right, and make your way over to the Dark Animus. So the doorway that opened is, are these gates right here? You want to come up these stairs, come all the way to these back stairs, and then go up the right side. If you go up the left side, it won't lead anywhere. So here we go, up the back stairs. We're gonna turn to the right and go up these stairs, and this will lead us to the chamber of the Dark Anima. Stop them! The Animus must not be disturbed! It cannot be wielded this way. You have doomed yourselves. It is okay. Kill the Dark Animus, and the fight is over. Okay, loot from the Dark Animus, 54 gold, hand of the Dark Animus, one-handed mace. One-handed mace, looks like that, hand of the Dark Animus. We also got the gore-soaked gear, it's a ring with a prismatic socket, set bonus, one critical strike, very cool. We also got Chaye's Essence of Brilliance, a trinket, 15 critical strike. Equip, when your spells deal critical damage, you have a chance to gain 50 intellect for 10 seconds, approximately 0.97 procs per minute. Very cool for you spellcasters out there. We also get this Hood of Crimson Wake, which is the Warlock lookalike cloth helmet and another of those Cha Yi's Essence of Brilliance. So that is the loot from Dark Animus. No pets, which is kind of weird. Now, over here on the northwest corner of the room, it's kind of dark to see, but there is a staircase right there. On the minimap, you can clearly see it. Try to avoid the spiders. I'll oh, see when one spider's attack, they all attack, and then the bats come down. It's just a giant cluster buck. Just make your way going up and up and up and up and up. And you'll eventually get to the chamber of the twin consorts. Wait, no, we're not there yet. We have to go through the courtyard and kill Iron G Coon. Or Iron Coon or whatever his name is. So, going up the stairs takes you to the sewers. And we can just avoid all the slimes, all the spiders, just go straight up the sewers. 
So we're now coming up the sewers. We want to take this exit right here, which is this first left, and that will lead us to the courtyard. We're just going to avoid these spiders as best we can. And here we are in the grand courtyard. Looks like this. There's a raid exit portal right there. Okay, see that's the door. On the other side of that door is that big long bridge that we got thrown down into the depths for. Yeah, now we're back up top. Beyond the other side of that door. Show your enemy the meaning of pain. How about I show him the meaning of pain? Strike quickly, Marsh. Show them no mercy. How about I show him no mercy? Okay, why is it not looting? Do I have... Oh, apparently there's so much loot here in the raid that your bags get full really quickly. Let's sell for just a minute. So we're going to sell all the boss loot. We're going to sell all of the junk, all the tokens. We're going to keep the bind on equip gear. Yeah, we, I can't believe I got that sword finally. Been looking for that for a little while now. We're going to keep one of these Primordius Talismans of Rage. Okay. So we're going to keep one of those. We're going to sell pretty much everything else that comes from this raid. But all this bind on equip gear, we're going to keep that because we can disenchant that into spirit dust, sell it on the auction house for big bucks. But you see how the stuff is selling for four gold, four gold, six gold, six gold, 12 gold for the weapons. Um, the jewelry sells for a little bit better. Trinket sell for the most for 25 gold, but I mean, it's not like what it used to be when it used to be 36 to 40 gold per piece of, of gear, 80 gold for the trinkets and the jewelry. Yeah. So let's do a little bit of organizing, bringing all of the mine on equipped gear over here, all the cloth over here, all the modes of harmony over here. And then, of course, we need to sell the boss suit over here, too. Because apparently we have some. And, of course, all the lock boxes over here. We'll put that over there because we're going to save it for time walking Many stuff. Farewells. And while we're at it, we can even... <laughs> Many deals for a friend of the Grummels. <laughs> yeah. And then we can also go get this other loot from Wei Shang over there. Now that we actually have space in our bags for it. Okay, Roshok and the Iron Quan is right over here. Last time I did this, I was able to kill him without him changing any dogs. Yep, just like that. Okay, loot from the Iron Quan. 55 gold, Rain Binder's Fist, Plate Hands. Again, Death Knight Gloves. We also get... We've gotten a lot of mage boots today. It's, it's weird. Um, Ray Binder's Fists. So we get another set of plate hands. We get two of the Death Knight gloves, two of the mage boots. Shoulders of the Crackling Conqueror. So we got the Paladin actual tier shoulders. But we're going to sell that token for 50 gold because I don't need the shoulders. We got Quetzal's Crackling Cord, Cloth Waste. That is for the priests. And Shoulders of the Crackling Protector. So if we go into the Shift P menu, come here to Sets on the Appearance tab, and we come down here to the Lightning Emperor's Battle Gear, which is this one, Battle Gear of the Lightning Emperor, we can see that on Heroic and Normal and Raid Finder, I have all the pieces, so I can just sell the tokens. So once you have defeated the Iron Con, head to the east and make your way over here to the Twin Consorts. Um, I forget what their names are. It's like she... I think one of them is Xian, and one of them is Lei Shi, or Lei Zi, or whatever her name is. I forget what their names are. 
There's so many weird Chinese names in this game. Lei Shi is the water spirit from from Terrace of Endless Spring. Lei Shen is the Lightning Emperor. They all sound alike. Okay, so once you've once you've killed those Zandalari trolls, come here and turn to the left and you'll find the Chamber of the Twin Consorts door right there. Okay, their names are Lu Lin. Okay, that's what it is. Lu Lin and Xuen. Or Suen, I guess. We have to kill Lu Lin first because Suen disappears. So kill Lu Lin and then kill Suen. Okay, Lu Lin is dead. Suen can die now. Okay, loot from the Twin Consorts, 53 gold, Robes of the Moon Lotus. We get the Priest Robes. Again, lots of Priest stuff today. I can't show you Passion Fire Choker because necklaces don't show up in the dressing room. We got the Shield of Twinned Despair. Goes really well with the Shaman Witch Doctor set. There you go. We also get these Bracers of the Midnight Comet. I do believe those are the Druid Bracers. They might be the Monk Bracers. You know what? They're leather. I think they're the Monk Bracers. Or actually, Rogue Bracers. They could be Rogue Bracers. I forget what they are. Now, Suen Wo, Spire of the Falling Sun. We get a two handed staff. Looks like that. There we go. That is the loot from the Twin Consorts. Once you've defeated the Twin Consorts, you want to head to the southeast, which is this set of, this hallway right over here. And you can then make your way up to the Pinnacle of Storms and defeat Lei Shen, the Thunder King. But once you kill him, the fight's not exactly over because then we have one more boss to do after Lei Shen. And like I said, this is a very, very long raid. So when you get to this room, turn to the right and you will find these stairs. And once you start going up the stairs, you're going to get bombarded by lightning or not. Oh, there we go. Bombarded by lightning. There we go. You have earned my ire. I will make an example of you, such that all who look upon my might will tremble and submit. The displacement pad appears to be active and stable. Okay, so use the displacement pad. And we're taken down to the Pinnacle of Storms where we can face off against Lei Shen. Now, you want to stand on one of these symbols when you fight him. Otherwise, you're going to get blown off when he does his pulsating whip. Okay, he's going to go to the center. Stand on. Make sure one of those symbols are at your back. And you want to just run forward because he's going to push you back. And if you don't have a corner behind you, you're going to get blown off. And then all of these cloud elementals are going to come attack you. Come back to the middle and just take everything out. Because this is all you can attack right now because Lei Shen is up there on his little pedestal, untouchable for the moment. Okay, Lei Shen is targetable. Let's kill him. Okay, so he's gonna he's gonna push us back again. Make sure you're standing on that symbol so you have a corner behind you. That way you don't get blown off by accident. Because that would just suck, right? You get killed. You have to start this fight over again. That's just a bad day overall.
Okay, Lei Shen is targetable. Let's take him out. Okay, and then once you kill Lei Shen on heroic, this little cinematic happens. Uh-oh, there's a deep, dark dungeon underneath the Forgotten Depths. Oh no, oh no. Okay, loot from Lei Shen. We get 56 gold. We get Lei Shen's Orb of Command held in the offhand. Looks like that. There we go. We also get the Ultimate Protection of the Empire. We get an offhand shield. So we just got that shield. Very cool, if you ask me. We get the Leg Wraps of Cardinality. Of yeah, Cardinality. Those are the Mage Pants. We just got those. We get the Grips of Slicing Electricity Leather Gloves. Looks like that. Those are for the monks, because remember the monk set is white and gold. So we get the monk gloves, and we get the soul prism of Lei Shen. It is a necklace with intellect, stamina, haste, versatility, two prismatic sockets with a socket bonus of two critical strikes. So you could put a big nasty gem in there and just use that in time walking dungeons if you want. All right, so once Lei Shen is defeated, there's a displacement pad underneath him. And the displacement pad appears to be active and stable. So use the displacement pad, and you are teleported to the Sarok creation pit right here in front of the gateway that opened. And this will take us down to the master of the Mogu. And we have to basically change his mind and bring him over to the light so he will help us in the battle for Azeroth. His name is Raden. He is one of the Titan Keepers of life. See the Fallen Keeper of Storms? He's the brother of Thorim, but Thorim is the Titan Keeper. He's Raden, Fallen Keeper of Storms. In silence, pierced only by the shrieks of the tormented, my dreams of waking nightmare. I see the naive hope in your eyes. <laughs> you think you are my savior? Okay, so he's going to break his chains. There he is. Pop your cooldowns and take him out. When I am finished with you, I shall not rest until this world is cleansed. Interesting, right? And then he disappears. Okay, loot from Raw Den today. 55 gold. Scales of shaped flesh. We get the hunter chess piece. Again, there it is. We get the white snow sky cloak. But it's not exactly white, is it? It's kind of orange. Okay. We get the bubbling anima belt. So we get the plate belt for the paladins. There you go. And we get the rogue boots and the rogue pants for nine tail battle gear. So those bracers before were the rogues because the rogues are outlined in yellow. There they are. We got the rogue, boot, and pants. Very cool. 
We also get the red sky cloud cloak, which isn't exactly red. It's like green and blue. Okay. So that is how you complete the Throne of Thunder. If you enjoyed this video and this presentation and you loved this adventure, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. Smash that like button, absolutely. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you always know when new content comes out. Also, please tell your friends about me so they can come and they can enjoy these videos and enjoy the adventures just as much as you do. Finally, and most importantly of all, please remember this. World of Warcraft is just a game, and games are meant to be fun, and you're supposed to have fun while playing them, so if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Meet me back here next time when we venture into one of the longest, hardest, most lengthy raids possible, and we go and depose evil Garrosh Hellscream as war chief because in Miss Pandaria he was the war chief. But then he kind of went off the deep end and the Shah took over his his will and he succumbed to darkness and we have to go take him out. So next time is the Siege of Ogremar. I look forward to bringing you that adventure and I hope you will join me when we go and depose Garage Hell's Cream. But until then, I'm Z, signing off. Ooh.